meal, you took it to the meal, you're never gonna make it on a broken wheel, take it on the chin, take it to the center, take it to the center and it's broken wheel. Uncle Roddus back again. More records. Fancy that. Um, right, this little pile. I am, have probably mentioned a few times, I am a member of a New Zealand vinyl lovers group on Facebook and quite often there are um, vinyl lovers selling vinyl. Um, for whatever reason. So keeping my eye open um, and you've got to be in quick sometimes too actually I've missed out on some interesting New Zealand stuff because you've got to be very quick unfortunately I can't be sitting on Facebook all day but I did go in pretty quick on one sale and got some reasonably priced quite good stuff that is um, that doesn't turn up in the shop particularly often um, this one here King Loser super Sonic Super Free Hi-Fi uh, from 1993 this is on Turbulence Records in Belgium Turbulence T-U-R-0-0-5 I think I've shown there was something else that I showed recently uh, I think it was a trash record in a video a few videos back that was also um, on Turbulence Records so I'm not sure why they were <laughs> releasing New Zealand albums um, yeah, sort of noisy indie pop from the time. It's, this is pretty cool, actually, pretty cool. And it's yeah, not the most, not an easy album to find. And I got it for a good price, and it's in fairly good nick. Um, so that was cool. And also from that man, I picked up this one here, Beltus Nelsh Belter Space. This is an EP. Um, this was their very first EP. Is that the actual name of it? Nash Belter Space? Self titled? Now, Belter Space, as I know nowadays, are still, a, are still a going concern, and I actually showed two records from them recently that they were released in the last, well, a few years, two or three years ago. Um, but they're really down to one original person. But it's interesting because Belter Space. Nash Belder Space and Belder Space were made up of I think two out of three of the members of the Gordons and the Gordons were a Christchurch post-punk pre-grunge kind of killing joke like band from the early 80s who put out two fantastic albums their first one is the one that everyone likes the most but I think their second one is really good and I pretty much rate them as one of my all-time favorite New Zealand bands and I would love to get my hands, I, I mean I did show recently I got my hands on a, a copy of their first album um, for a, a reasonable price because they do go for fairly biggish money. The second album isn't quite so well liked by the fraternity but I think it's really good and I used to have a copy and now it sells for two to three hundred dollars. Anyway that band t morphed into this band in the sort of later 80s, this was their first release. I never got into it, into them back then for some reason. I don't know why. Because I guess they weren't quite like the Gordons. They were a bit more laid back and mellow, and a little more, a little bit more happening in their music. Um, but this is really good, our EP. And actually, I have, I am familiar with some other stuff from their later albums, which are actually quite hard to find. Their first albums, um, Tanker and Wemo and that, and there's some really good songs off them. I'd love to get my hands on um, nowadays. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't. Um, I mentioned in the last video, I, which I haven't posted yet, which will get posted in the next couple of weeks, um, our trip to Dunedin. 
to Dunedin and on the Sunday we got back there was a Bill Irene gig in Christchurch so I we got back on Tuesday Sunday afternoon and I was pretty much unpacked had tea got into town to um, go and see Bill Irene and he has a new album come out it's this one here it's actually a kind of reissue but for the first time on vinyl of a cassette and possibly CD release from 2008 uh, this is out on Zell Records um, who I've spoken about in my last video I picked up another Zell Records release I was pleased to get this because it is a limited edition of something like about 300 copies um, yeah anyway Bill's good he did an acoustic solo set this night and but was joined yeah which was really cool and he was playing songs it was called theatre songs so he was playing songs that he'd written for theatre and, and pop operas and things like that um, yeah he's quite arty sort of guy and he's a poet a writer um, as well and, and, um, and quite an intellectual um, but very can be very lo-fi um, I prefer his band stuff to be honest he did get he did get um, his bass player up on the stage with him for a while and did some good stuff and then the, to cap the night off the best he got um, Steve Kogel was there who, who played in the terminals and who with whom he played many years ago and they played together for the last song that was really really good um, Bill did mention that he had a compilation for sale and it was the very last copy that he had now I didn't know anything about it but I thought I should grab it and um, I did I pr pretty much grabbed it out of his hand at the end of the show um, and, and the price was really good he was selling these for 25 bucks each that is this record and, and, and the one I just showed thank you San Francisco it turned out is actually a various artist compilation with just the one Bill Doreen song on it um, which was a little bit disappointing when I got home and actually realized um, but having having listened to it a couple of times it's actually it's actually really good I mean it's a real mix of stuff and I mean it's a really never heard of any of the artists um, on it at all <laughs> Pate Snot, Leon Stackpole, Ladella Black and the Masonics, Clorox Girls, Out With A Bang, Pleasure Leftists just to name a few but never never heard of any of them but uh, interesting mix of music a little bit of punky sort of post punky stuff a bit of bit of um yeah bill doreen who's just really hard to pigeonhole but some similar stuff to him um that, so that yeah so the disappointment wavered pretty quick once i listened to it so it's a pretty cool thing to have um mentioned also in my last video that i was waiting on an, on a pre-order from flying out records and I'd ordered some other stuff and actually what happened for this lot um, and, and I ordered it well over a month ago but we were waiting on that last album to come in for the pre-orders and it was a bit delayed um, that, um, and that was this one here the Shane the Shane Carter record and I'd seen Shane Carter a couple of weeks ago or the weekend before I went to Dunedin which was a couple of weeks ago and he actually had copies of this then but I didn't manage to get which I could have bought but I'd already pre-ordered it so I didn't get my copy until later on but the really cool thing was that I had because I buy so much off um, flying out I didn't even realize but I, I get accumulated points and I had enough points for like 150 bucks worth of credit so I got pretty much all these records I met show for nothing I think it cost me about three dollars ninety five to make up to the um, $150 worth of credit that I had. So Shane, this is his first solo album. He was a member of several New Zealand bands and he's actually quite a legend in New Zealand music. Um, this one was written on a piano organ type thing. He so it's keyboard lead, he's playing an organ type thing. Um, played a couple of those things off of the show. Um, it's actually been out for quite a while but on CD only so this was the release the vinyl release finally got came to, came on shore this is um, just recently uh, Alistair Galbraith this is another one of his he's got a pretty big discography to be honest um, I've I've got another one called mass I think it was which has a similar kind of looking cover and but but the artwork in the middle is slightly different um, I thought maybe they were related in some ways, but they're actually quite a fair way apart in, in output. This is on MIE Records. I, think I had something else on MIE I showed recently. Um, MIE are out of England, I think. Um, 
releasing some pretty obscure New Zealand music. I actually haven't given this much of a listen yet. Um, managed to pick up yet another Delaney Davidson record, Diamond Dozen. This is his second to latest LP. Um, well, actually, is this his latest LP because from oh, 2015, I think, um, because the last release that, I, that I've got and that he did was a live EP, um, six-track EP that he put out for Record Store Day in 2016. So um, this is pretty cool. I mean, everything from Davidson I've listened to is pretty cool. Um, and also playing in the background is this one here. Davidson's Lucky Guy. Ooh, when was this released? That doesn't say. This is a wee bit older, probably from more like about 2010 or 11, if I could find a date, but I can't. Um, this, yeah, so I, I got this with the free records, pretty much. So these four that I've just, oh, one more to show you, sorry. Uh, actually, must have got five records. Oh! Actually, no, that's not right. I think I already showed this. No, I didn't show this. This was another one I picked up in Dunedin. My mistake. I picked this up in Dunedin on my holiday in Dunedin the other week. Yeah, that's right. I knew I'd a bit out of count there. So, yeah. Um, turned out, I already had a bloody copy of this. Didn't that rip your shorts? Um, yeah. Got, got home, unwrapped it sort of got to thinking about it and then remembered hell I've got a copy of that anyway this one here is a Roy Montgomery record this is the first Roy Montgomery record I've owned Roy Montgomery I've mentioned um, I may have mentioned in a video I saw him do a live thing a month a couple of months ago in Christchurch yeah, and there was the Oracle was kind of like a place where they had experimental sort of soundscape noise electronic music um, presented it's unfortunately all closed down that was pretty much the end of it um, when I saw this and he was originally in the pin group which was the band that was the very first single out on Fly None Records in New Zealand in 1981 um, and he's moved on to a lot of other stuff I saw him and he was absolutely mind-blowing and just blew me away he just did a little solo thing on a piece that he was still in the process of, of writing and, and recording um, but he gave us a demonstration of it, just him and his guitar and the, and the, the, the echo and the rip and the um, play, the kind of the looping that he was doing and the what. It was just something stunning. Anyway, this is called Music from the Film Hey Bad Finger. Now I have no idea what this film is.